Hi, this is Joni Swedland. Welcome to the Strong Women, Stronger World podcast, where each episode we interview different leaders to help accelerate your leadership learning, challenge you to take risks, to advance your own career, and teach you how to lead from inside out. My comments and insights are based on my own experience, which span a 27-year career in global management consulting, including 18 as a partner. This podcast is meant to inspire and empower you to action. It is time to step into your power. The world needs more women leaders. Together, we are strong. Strong women, stronger world. Our topic today is creating confidence in chaos with our special guest, Becky Gravy. Not only is Becky a communications executive and expert, she is also my amazing sister. The secret's out. (laughs) The secret's out. I'm so excited to do this with my sister. Yay. Um, So it is a safe bet that most university curriculums did not include a course on how to lead through the pandemic, certainly not with empathy and inclusion as driving forces. Yet all eyes are on business leaders to pull us through and reshape how everyone in the organization stays informed, supported, and connected. Those doing it well are opening up, They're digging deep and listening with intention to get to a true read on what employees are experiencing from day to day. They are getting real about what those working from home and on the front lines need to feel seen, valued, and productive. In this session, we talk with Becky Gravy, Senior Director, Communication Strategy for Dynamic Signal about the importance of empathy and aligning words and actions as the workplace relies more heavily on digital communication solutions. Welcome, Becky, to the show. Thank you. Thank you, Joni. This is so fun. And it's about a topic I feel, you know, super strong about. Well, I know right now this is so important and it's so topical and on the minds of lots of leaders. So let's get started with just sharing a little bit about your background on your career journey and what led you to focus on communications. Yeah, you know, I've spent um, almost all of my career in one form of organizational communication or another. Uh, following a very short stint in in banking, which was all it took for me to realize I'm much more of a word person than a numbers person. But I made the transition early on by entering into an employee communication position in the financial services realm. Um, And then I spent 16 years at SAS, the business analytics company based in Cary, North Carolina, um, leading employee uh, communication and employee advocacy. And a little over three years ago, um, I was approached to fill a new position for Dynamic Signal. Dynamic Signal is an employee uh, communication and engagement platform, digital employee engagement uh, platform that we had introduced at SAS a few years before. So I was invited to serve as an in-house communication consultant, so helping organizations who were considering this, uh, you know, crossing this chasm and building their own employee communication and uh, advocacy platform. So, uh, you know, it was a leap of faith for sure for me to move out of kind of a traditional comms role. Um, But I really felt like it had uh, it had legs for me in terms of, um, you know, bringing in my experience, the wins, the failures, all of that to be able to share with people who were considering doing something similar. Great. Well, that that's such an excellent example of leaning into your leadership and willing to take a risk at a certain point in your career, but continuing to do what you love. Absolutely. Yeah, definitely. So you've been in the corporate communication space for practically all of your career. What are you seeing that's different right now, particularly as it relates to leadership communication? Oh my gosh, you know, I think 
I think everything has changed right now for all of us, uh, and communications is certainly no exceptions. Uh, you know, employees have always been uh, a priority and a stakeholder for organizations in terms of, of, of gathering and, and, and garnering leaders' attention. But, you know, the priority, I would say, uh, was not on employee communication. And I think they often fell below what shareholders needed, what analysts wanted, what customers needed uh, in terms of all sorts of resources and attention. But 2020 really flipped that on its head, you know? And, I, I, you know, we saw leaders at every level from the C-suite to frontline managers who were really putting yeah, you know, safety and wellness and, and, and employee welfare first, you know, were they getting what they needed um, to feel productive and to meet the growing demands, you know, that all of us were, were faced with. So uh, between that, I think we've also seen just like, you know, one of my, uh, my colleagues calls, you know, that leaders take off their jackets. You know, we saw leaders coming in with more authenticity, more empathy, more understanding of what it takes for people to be successful in their roles right now. Um, you know, the other thing we saw was a lot of leaders realizing for the, sometimes for the first time that they weren't able to reach their entire workforce directly. They could reach people sitting in headquarters or the corporate offices or the um, desk, desk workers, but they couldn't reach people who were out in the delivery trucks or out on the manufacturing floor. So there were a lot of wake up call moments for leaders as a result, you know, as it relates to, to employee comms um, over the last year. I love this whole concept of in the shift, because I think that um, 2020 has, if anything, has shown us that we have to be prepared for the un unexpected and the unplanned. And when it comes to communications, I mean, all of a sudden, everything is disrupted. And I love the concept you talked about leaders taking off their jacket and really <laughs> leaning more into that authenticity. Um, can you talk a little bit more about that, especially how leaders are doing that on a digital channel? Yeah, yeah, it's tough. I mean, I think one of the one of the advantages right now is that suddenly the playing field is level, right? The the challenges that our leaders are facing are the same ones in many cases that our frontline leader uh, that our frontline employees are. Not all the same, but but they also might be working out of their uh, you know out of their home office or their kitchen table. They might also have pets and animals and or pets and and children in the background. Uh, homeschooling and all kinds of demands, right? So I think it kind of um, opened up the the idea that that we're all coming from some of the same pressures and and limitations and obstacles right now. Um, but I think you know what your what your question was about you know how 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 difficult does it become to relate when you have to rely on those digital channels. I mean, obviously, you know, many of us only know some, I only know some of my new colleagues on my team from the waist up because, you know, that's the way we've been, <laughs> that's the way we've been meeting, right? Um, but I do, I, I also think there's an appreciation that comes from employees that recognizes that um, our leaders can't be everywhere, especially those who are in glo large global enterprises. Um, so technology is helping us fill that gap to the best of technology's ability, um, but I think some of the newer, um, the, some of the newer options that lean into things like video communications, where we can actually experience in in greater form a leader's conviction, their ambition, their understanding, um, in ways that were just harder to do with the CEO corner newsletter words, you know. Um, I think digital has also allowed us to uh, accept some of the nuances of language that are within our organizations, you know, real time translation, uh, you know, things we haven't always had in the workplace. And that feels respectful. That feels honoring. Um, it also allows for much more inclusivity. We talk about this, the chance for everyone, not just some but for everyone in the organization to connect directly to leaders and, and to one another without filter or even you know unintended bias. So it, it's that push, but it's also the pull. I mean, technology and, and some of the, the more modern uh, platforms are allowing us as employees to ask questions, 
and to give feedback and to share ideas in ways that the old, you know, let's print the newsletter and set it in the, the seat of a, of a delivery truck just didn't allow for. So, you know, I think, yeah, definitely, I'm not gonna say there are no challenges. There are some very inherent challenges in having to rely on digital first, not digital only, but digital first. Um, but it also comes with some opportunities and, and some benefits as well. Yeah, I, I love what you um, were describing about, you know, the level playing field and how being able um, to see leaders in almost their natural habitat. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. It's like, you know, oh, yeah, they're really human. They're they're down to, you know, they, they have the same obstacles and challenges as you were talking about. And I love the idea of the whole inclusivity that you're you're talking about and how this really does create that opportunity for leaders to reach their employees more broadly um, because it gives people an opportunity to see you as a human being yeah. and that um, you care. And the fact that employees have the opportunity to ask questions and to share their ideas, all of this um, kind of plays into that feeling valued and, and being heard and seen in a way that may not have been possible uh, right. you know, through the newsletter. Right, and they may not have realized how important it was, but, yeah. but now they do. And they're finding ways to work through that. And I think that's good. I don't think we'll go back. You know, we might have more face to face interaction, which would be great. But there will be ways that when when a leader says, hey, my door's always open, that doesn't mean the door at headquarters. That means there are ways to to reach and to share ideas and to ask for what you need. I love this. I love the idea of, you know, this this may be creating a new norm versus just being a trend. Let's hope so. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Let's hope. <laughs> yes. Oh my yeah. goodness. All right. So it's it's interesting how this new kind of transparency and this new level of access to leaders, um, especially with everything else that's been going on um, in 2020 and 2021. Um, you know whether that is you know taking stances in areas that you you know you may not have been expected to take a stance mm. on before, mm -hmm. either. Um, mm -hmm. you know, whether that is your work in your personal life, whether that's traditional news and what the employer views are or purpose and profit or, you know, transparency protection or whether it's the political scene or, <laughs> you know, what is going, you know, and all of the movements that are happening right now. So, you know, how are leaders dealing with this? It's heavy. I mean, it's a it's a big shift that happened quickly. I mean, there was a time when if there were any kind of political leanings or any kind of, um, you know, societal views, uh, leaders were kind of expected to keep those to themselves. Uh, there was that separation and and that shift to we want to know who you are. We want to see the authentic, the fullness of your truth. Uh, that has that's happened quickly. Um, so I think you know the the leaders that are getting it right are recognizing number one that as a society, I think we're ready to knock down some of those walls between who you are in your professional life and who you are in your personal life. That there really shouldn't be this drastic difference, right? We want to live as a society in more of an open concept type home, right? Knock the walls down. We want to know what's going on over here. Um, and, it, you know, unfortunately, it, it probably took the newer generations coming into the workforce to push the edges, um, to, to share their voices, to ask for what they need. Um, and they want to know what you're all about as a leader, because that reflects on, uh, there's no separating what you believe in and how you lead. Um, Although we might have nuances and differences, people want to have a, you know, people want to know what, what you are at your core. So, and that's something that I think is really hard to, to spin up quickly. Um, it's trust and it's, it's really not something that you control. It's something you have to earn with your employees, with society at large. I mean, if you look at the latest Edelman uh, Trust Barometer, it was just published a few weeks ago, it identifies my employer, not, not 
the title of CEO, but my employer as the most trusted source of information. Um, that's over government, NGOs, the media, uh, other institutions. It's just a really powerful opportunity to step into that limelight, own what you want to be about and how you want to help lead your organization in a time of major change within the world. Absolutely. I, I love how you're getting into what you believe is how you lead, because this really gets into the whole concept of core values mm. and really digging deep into what are your beliefs and how do you share that transparently with your employees? Right. Um, because as you mentioned, in building that trust, this really gets into your authentic self. And um, I, I love that whole concept of the open concept home you talked about. It makes <laughs> me think of open concept leadership. <laughs> exactly. Yes. Exactly. It's a new trend. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, I, it's interesting how they're getting forced into that in, in a sense. It, it, in some ways, it doesn't sound fair, but in other ways, it's 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 reality, right? I mean, we especially with social and with so many people being willing to share their experiences about what happens at work, leaders just can't hide behind uh, words and actions that that don't align anymore. hundred uh, percent agreed. And you know, speaking of reality, I mean, the pandemic has landed on people in so many different ways and have impacted employees in so many different ways. So half the battle is really knowing, right, what the employees are facing. But, you know, this can be hard, especially when your workforce, some people are working from home. Some people have started going back to the office. More employers have, you know, are starting to communicate that they are looking to open and have people come back to the office. But it's hard when you've got employers, employees in different parts of the organization. They could be in different countries, different states. Yeah. Um, you know, how it's, and it's risky about assuming what people are experiencing because this pandemic has impacted everyone individually. So how, you know, what is concerning? I know it's hard to say, you know, in general, but what, what are you hearing through your clients and through your experience? What, what is coming up, bubbling up from the employees that leaders need to be aware about? Yeah. Joni, you just, you just, what you just said is, is so, so powerful in that we can't assume that. And we can't assume that the buzz topics are going to work for every organization and every employee within an organization. The only way we'll know is if we're listening and we're asking and we're de destigmatizing the idea that people might need help right now. They might need help temporarily. Um, they might need help over the longer term. Um, but when we talk about wellness and it just, it still kills me. I mean, about six months ago, I was talking with our um, CFO and he was talking to me about a leadership group that he's a part of where he gets, you know, they're getting like 50, 75 CFOs that come onto this call and they, you know, share what's going on and ideas for financial, you know, health. Again, I'm back to the numbers, so I won't go too deep into it. But he, he was telling me that uh, one of the remarkable things about one particular call was that the whole topic that was brought up, you know, bubbled up from the, uh, underneath was the whole idea of wellness. And he said, you know, when was the last time you heard a bunch of CFOs sitting around talking about wellness at work? So the whole, that whole idea is, is moving into the, the decision-making aspects of our organizations, which is great. Um, but it, but if we're not asking and if we're not um, providing ways for employees to be heard about what specifically they do need, we're missing an opportunity because it, wellness is not a one size fits all. First of all, if you think about wellness, wellness can be physical, emotional, mental, spiritual, financial, so many different realms of, of what wellness means to someone. But I, my, you know, one of the things we have to bear in mind is that, you know, where it used to be maybe one in four or five of your employees was struggling uh, with some aspect of wellness, it's now the majority. 
is now the majority that are dealing with financial stress or a job loss or uh, one of the um, one of the parents in the home having to help homeschool or provide the child care. It's, it's tough. It's just tough. So, uh, you know, one of the things that we're seeing in terms of trends as we talk to organizations globally is that this idea that we can easily as organizations overplay the personal responsibility aspect of thinking that because we've built these programs, they will come. It is not, it is, it doesn't work like that, right? <laughs> that employees will naturally seek out the programs and the support and the assistance that they need. But I think in doing that, especially I'm, I'm speaking about leadership here, in doing that, we can focus too hard on what's wrong with our people and not perhaps on what's wrong with work. You know, what are we demanding? What kind of cultural work norms have we set that have made it difficult for people to continue to plug into what they need right now? So it's our job as leaders to step back and ask what role we have, not in just popping some perks and popping some programs over the fence, but continuing to pay attention to how our, how our workforce is evolving and moving and shifting and align our messaging around that um, to make sure there are easy ways for people to respond. Let us know, recognize trends and, and act on them, do something about them. One of the ways that we're seeing this done with leaders is connecting through their ERGs. Uh, their employee resource groups have tremendous connection power already. So rather than recreating things, how about you know we tap into the employees who are leading some of these with ex hopefully with executive sponsorship. In my opinion, that's the way they should be designed. Um, but employee leaders who can help us identify the conversations we need to have. I mean, I, I worked with one customer as an example who uh, found out through their um, African American ERG that. The, the company was providing wonderful counseling services, but there were no black counselors. And for many of their employees, that was a difficult hurdle to overcome. And so those are the types of nuances that I think we can learn from and become better organizations and leaders as a result of not thinking, check, check, check. We've got all these great programs. Why aren't people using them? You know? Wow, what that that's so powerful. And what a great suggestion about tapping into the existing ERGs. I think I loved that example because as you mentioned, they already have those connections and for to be able to get that information, just that little nuance of things that would really make a difference for your employees um and and that could make that, that can make the world of difference um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. what's going on right now. And I also loved what you brought up instead of what's wrong with our people, because inherently there's nothing wrong with people. Uh, they're just going Thank through you. this traumatic experience. <laughs> yeah. But I love the whole question around what's wrong with work and really taking the time to examine what needs to evolve? What needs to change? Right. Um, and as leaders, we are empowered to make those changes. Yes. And not be afraid of that question because you may ask the question and there might be very little that you uncover that you're not already striving to do really well. Yeah. But don't be afraid of the question, you know? Love that. I love that. All right. So, Becky, what is one thing that you've learned during the pandemic that has made you physically or mentally better? Oh my gosh, I love the positiveness. Um, uh, well, one thing I've learned that I didn't know how to do before was to make homemade pot stickers. So I'm pretty proud of myself <laughs> for that. <laughs> but no, seriously, I mean, for me, it's probably a similar answer you hear from others. It's just um, slowing down appreciating relationships in my life that I was moving too fast before all this happened to just fully appreciate and enjoy. So I, I don't want to lose sight of that. And I, that, that only comes with intention of making that happen. Uh, being able to turn off work 
even whether it's a digital platform that can reach me at all hours of the night or not, I still have the ability to, to turn that, turn that down. What wonderful advice for all leaders is take the time to slow down. Sometimes we need to go slow in order to go fast and being able to take, to slow down and really value and appreciate all of those relationships in our life. I think that we all will never take for granted the ability to get together and connect oh, ever totally. again. <laughs> totally. Through, totally. Sure. But I, I think being, you know, and being vulnerable about that, I, one of my favorite examples I've seen in the last week, we had a leader who shared, a, you know, because our platform allows leaders to share video right from their smartphones. Um, one of these, uh, a leader within a, a tax advisory company, it was right after April 15th. And I know we have an extension this year, but he called out the fact, you know, take some time, take some time, take some time and to his people. And when he, he said, let me show you what happened when I did, he went out on his driveway with his four-year-old and watched his four-year-old drive, ride a bicycle for the first time without the training wheels. And he recorded it, of course, as any parent would with their smartphone. But this little boy's joy at the end of him saying, I did it, I did it, I did it, brought tears to my eyes. And I don't even work for this gentleman. But he shared that to say, these are some of the moments we've been missing because we've been two nose down. So, yeah, there are beautiful ways for leaders to share their, their humanness and invite the rest of us to do the same. Oh, that is so beautiful. I love that story and finding the extraordinary in the ordinary, right? And taking the time to do that. Yeah. So beautiful. So Becky, before we can let you go, um, there is a keystone question that we ask all of our guests on the show. And okay. that is, what makes you feel strong? What makes me feel strong is finding the courage to say no. Mm -hmm. I'm a, I'm a, person who likes to be helpful and, um, you know, a peacemaker. And, but when I do find the courage to say no in a constructive way, I, I think I grow an inch taller. <laughs> yeah. It allows me to say yes to the things that are most important to me. So I'm trying to do more of it in a really healthy way. Yes. Yes to the no. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> Excellent. So, so no, Becky, you're not getting a handwritten Christmas card. Okay. <laughs> Would not expect it. <laughs> so Becky, where can our listeners find you? Oh my gosh. I love to connect on LinkedIn. It's just under my name, Becky Gravy. And on Twitter, the same at Becky Gravy. Uh, those are my two, the places that I like to connect most on social. And I'd, I'd love to talk with anyone who wants to learn more about um, leadership communication, employee communication, or even dynamic signal. So glad to, glad to share more. Oh my gosh. Thank you, Becky, so much for joining our show and Thanks for your for having me, Joni. and tips. Oh my gosh, this was amazing. Um, and I want to thank you, our listeners. Um, we hope that you were inspired today to create confidence out of the chaos around you and step into your leadership. Thank you for listening. If you are interested in supporting this content, please hit the subscribe button. This will help to bring much needed funding to bring quality programming to our listeners like you. Your support is greatly appreciated. We encourage you to leave comments. If you have suggestions for leadership topics, please provide those in the comments and we will strive to address those in upcoming episodes. It is time to step into your power. The world needs your leadership. Together we are strong, strong women, stronger world.